Don't you just love springtime? That's quite an impressive bow you have there. Hello? Just like Diana's. Hello. Have we met before? Do you like it? It's shiny, isn't it? It makes me happy just looking at it. But, if I gave it to you, then I wouldn't have it anymore, and I'd be sad. But, it's mine, and I really like it. I want to keep it. Um, well, if you get me out of here, then I wouldn't need it anymore, because I'd already be happy. Then... You could have it, and you'd be happy too. Like... Galerius? Yeah, Galerius will let me out. Then you can have my plaque. Bye-bye.
Hey, you're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? Nobody's told you about Hannibal. Ugh, why do I have to do everything around here? So, there was this guy called Hannibal, right? Funny accent. He used to go down into the cisterns looking for junk he could clean up and sell. One day, a few weeks back, he comes out and tells me the cisterns are haunted. Said he could hear spirits wailing. Of course, nobody believed him, because who trusts a Carthaginian, right? Anyway, a few days later, he goes back in. And hours go by, and he hasn't come back out, yeah? So I go down after him, and it's dark. But in the distance, I can just make out his body sprawled out on the ground. And hunched over him was something that made my blood run cold. No word of a lie. I saw a creature. Like the corpse of a man who'd been flayed. And it was eating Hannibal. If it was a man, maybe. But I swear on my life this was no man. More like a Strix. Or some Versipellus that feeds on human flesh. I didn't stick around to see which. Well, any sane person would have done. I legged it out of there and put a sign at the door to warn the others. Well, it's your funeral.
You. Who are you? Did he send you? Thank you know you're here. You have to help me escape before that monster comes back. I'm Centella. I found a way out through the Gate of Horn, but it's locked. So I told him about it, and instead of helping me escape, he locked me up. He wants to keep us all here forever, or until we're turned to gold. He's a monster. You have to let me go so we can kill him and take his key. Sentius, my adoptive father. Furies help me. I'll castrate and crucify him. I don't know. He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. Behind me, there's an aqueduct tunnel bringing water from outside the city, so it should lead us outside. The only problem is it's barred by a heavy locked gate, and he has the only key. I'm going to take that key from around his neck, even if it means cutting his throat to get it. I'm done caring about the golden rule. Just one out. Help me, and we can escape together. There won't be enough time. Just you and me. What do you say? There's no time. Wait, did you hear that? He's here. Quick, you have to let me go. It's now or never. What? No! You can't just leave me here! How can you be so heartless? I hate you. I spit on you. I hope... This drags you to Tartarus.
So you survived the system. Probably just a stroke of fortune. I hope you have a good reason for flouting my weapons ban. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? We have? Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the golden rule forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume we failed, and you had to start over. Is that about right? If so, what happened? You broke it. Why in Pluto's name would you do that? Well, it seems you failed spectacularly. Look, it's unfortunate, but all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you've sought me out again for a reason. Me? What are you talking about? came through the portal before you. Come now. Surely you didn't think you were the only one here who remembered everything. You see, my connection to the portal somehow preserves my memories from one day to the next. Whether that was Proserpina's intention or a happy accident, I'll never know. But I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Here I was, thinking you were a little bit sharper than Al was. Or perhaps you're just more willing to break the rules. He was a moralistic fellow, never once compromised on his principles. And because of that fatal flaw, he relived this day many thousands of times before we finally had this conversation. I watched him come through the portal each time, always a little older, a little more disheveled, a little more... And when he finally saw the futility of it all, as you're about to, it broke him. He drank a jug of wine, tied a noose around his neck, and took his own life, just before he was shot with a golden arrow. The next time I awoke, you showed up, but you, you've caught up to where he was so quickly. I mean, you've lived through the day, what? Five times? Extremely impressive. And yet everything you've done has been in vain. Because there's no escape. Except the path that Al took. The path he wrote about on his tablet. What was it? Ah, yes. Best to take your own life now. So, you discovered my secret. So what? 
What are you going to do about it? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I have grown attached to all this. My title, my beautiful villa, the sun on my face, the music of birds chirping. And as long as this day keeps repeating itself, I get to enjoy it all, over and over again, for eternity. Don't you see? I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself? And why would I agree to that? You might want to think that through. If anyone so much as touches me, everyone dies. The only way you're getting this key is over my dead body. And if I die, I won't be able to open the portal for you again, meaning you'll have created a paradox. You see, it was my actions that brought you to this point in time. So if you kill me, you'll stop me from doing so. And you being here will be an impossibility. That means if I die, you'll be flung back to your original time, having caused the deaths of everyone here, and you'll never be able to undo it. Is that what you want? Oh, you and your pathetic morality. Nobody cares about your opinions or what happens where you're from. Least of all, me. Understand that to me, you've never been anything more than a useful idiot and you're no longer useful. I certainly hope not. In fact, I want it to go on and on forever until you wither and die like Al did and the gods send yet another useful idiot to extend my life for me. What are you going to do? Beg the gods for help? <laughs> they don't care about you and neither do I. Now, get out of my villa. I'm bored with you. Friend. I haven't slept right three weeks. Don't be too hard on yourself. From what I hear, nobody saw it coming. Anyway, I thought you Stoics weren't supposed to worry about things you can't control. Yeah, but I keep thinking. What if there is something like in there? What if she's out there somewhere, suffering, waiting to be found? Sounds like you're torturing yourself.
many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? Sounds serious. I'm listening. All right, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. Yulia? Oh, no. All right, I can do that. Poor Virgil. Poor Rufius, too, I guess. All right, got it. How did you... All right, of course. I'll make sure this gets to him. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you know all of this. The 49 melodies fetch again with incessant labor. The water they have lost. Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, but it... Say it. Then it is true? I thought I had to tell myself it was tr I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. He gives such an... <laughs> I understand. And now we share a secret. It's as if you've lived... Tell me where I could get one of my own. 
What is this? I... Don't even talk to me. No need for that. I just wanted to give you this willow bark to help you treat it. A treatment? Really? Hey! You're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? Well, it's your funeral.
Keep an eye out for Centella, would you? Demetrius doesn't usually let anyone in here without a hefty tribute, so you must have been desperate to see me. Well, what do you want? My name is Marcus Maliolus Gurgis. You... you mean my heterochromia? And I'm hardly the only person with the condition. I like to think it is simply the way the gods have chosen to mark a natural-born ruler. Unlikely, because it simply isn't true. I trust you can see yourself out. supposed to be in here? Talk! What business could you possibly have with me? Hmm, an intriguing proposition. Go on. Hmm, perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. What makes you say that? You know, I may have the very thing you're looking for. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only, he used the wrong name. Now, addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. I confronted him about it and he stammered through some incoherent response. I let it go, eventually, and yet... questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... wait a minute. Why exactly are you helping me? To withdraw. Listen. I may not be Penelope to his Ulysses, but to ruin his plans to become a magistrate? You must think me quite mad. I've heard enough. Get out of here at once. Domitius, come quickly. We're being robbed. Do I need to call Domitius? Get... again. What is it now? My name? You? And I? I like... Well... Unlikely. I trust you...
So you survived the system. Probably just a stroke of fortuna. Don't get cocky. What is it, citizen? All right. Be careful who you trust. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Galerius just saved my life. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. Our priestess at Quetia once told me it's the gods' way of creating a city without sin. But if that's the case... Then whichever god is responsible for it, didn't think it through. I mean, all it really does is make bad people better at hiding their sins. And good people too frightened to stand up for themselves. I've seen Maliolus, Claudia and Domitius make grown men cry. Romans. They don't cry easily. They've never physically hurt anyone. But the point is, they don't have to. They've got people running scared because everyone knows Maliolus is the favorite to win today's election. Really? Then I hope fortune smiles on you, friend. If that's your idea of a joke, it's not funny. Go away. and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Don't believe a word they tell you. Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh my, that is quite a lot to take in. You'll have to give me a moment. Let's see, if that is indeed the case. We do her, her, sis, and so... That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the Golden Rule. And as I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld. I'll admit, you do seem different to anyone I've ever met. And even that lamp of yours looks like something Prometheus might have stolen from the gods. So, if you want to confront him, I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, you'd need an audience with you-know-who, and for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is... It look... If you could rec... It's... Your... How... That means... May 14th...
Salve. Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and... it worked! How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? Uh, you're toying with me, right? You're a bit like Sisyphus. Sisyphus, he was for forcing him to... Actually, now that I think about it, there Tantal... Oh, and Ixie... Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into- So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you. Oh. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I saw you slide down that rope before. And- Oh, of course! It's because I already gave it to you in- Anyway, I'm... What? How did you know? Oh, I see. We talked about it in a previous loop, didn't we? Well, what did she say? Venus, that is the best news I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I wish there was something I could do to thank you properly. All I can do is tell you where there's a secret stash of coins you might be interested in. Thank you, friend. In the rock tunnel, near the... Unfortunately, one of those golden huntress statues is blocking the path. If you can figure out how to get past it, I reckon... All right, friend. Hope you find a... Again, did you find what you need? On your best behavior, I trust. See you again soon, I hope.
Keeping an eye on things, Horatius? As always, Priestess. Any news about Centilla, Navia, or Kabash? No sign of any of them, I'm afraid. But we do have a newcomer. Strangely dressed woman. Pretty, though. Funny accent, too. A traveler from a faraway land, then? Seems that way. Then let's make sure she feels welcome, shall we? Of course, Priestess. Traveler from a greetings. I'm my friend. I hope that our paths cross again. Ah, a new face. I hear we have you to sing. Nice to talk.
citizen. Don't believe a word they tell you. Beautiful. Ah, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you decided to visit. I'm Aurelia. And uh, I hope I'm not being... There's a... How dare you? Oh, do us all a favour and drink hemlock, cap at murder. Isn't that a big, long bow? Oh, do us all a favor and drink hemlock.
to believe a word they tell you.
Do I need to call Domitius? So you survived the system. Are they? I thought I told you to get out of my villa. I'm bored with you. Many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Let me see. Yulia? Oh no. 
All right, I can do that. But how did you... All right, of course. I'll make sure this gets to him. Poor Virgil. Poor Rufius, too, I guess. All right, got it. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you'd know all of this. Ixian turns. Fabia, listen. There's a troublemaker coming into the city. I know, and I'll take care of him. Just go and hide, but not in the empty shrine. Wait, how did you know I was headed in there? No time to explain. Go! All right. I'll be in my bakery. Thank you, Galerius. Don't shoot. I'm no threat. You'll find what you're looking for in the avenue. Second building on your left. I've got to run. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. Lucretia, no time to explain. I'm supposed to give you the Sylphium resin for Yulia. What? Quick, give it here. I'm just going to help her swallow this. I think she's going to be all right. Galerius, you're amazing. How did you know? I was just doing what the new lady told me. I don't understand. How did... Never mind. Thank you so much. Can't stay. Places to be. Salve, Rufius. I hear your rheumatism has you so riled up you've been harassing Virgil. What? My condition is nobody's business but mine. There's no need for that. I just wanted to give you this willow bark to help you treat it. A treatment? Really? <sighs> Thank God. Finally, some relief after all this time. Thank you, Galerius. You're a good man, and I'll be sure to leave Virgil alone. I know I haven't been at my best lately. Appreciate that. Now, I've got to run. Good news, Alpius. Here's enough money to pay off your and Yulia's debts to Maliolus. Huh. What? Are you messing with me? I wouldn't do that. Here. Take it. We're... We're going to be free. Galerius, thank you. It seems fortune smiles on us after all. I, uh... I'd better go and sort this out immediately. in that villa again what how galerius arranged it somehow really that's incredible oh what a relief i don't know what to say you don't need to say anything just rest up get your strength back and we'll celebrate properly when you're ready
Keep an eye out for Centella, would you? Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and it worked. How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know? Uh, Sis Sisypha, he was forced. <sighs> Tanzel, oh. Anyway, so. Oh, now I'm going to keep your secret. Oh, and if our conversation. All weapons are to be tossed into the chasm. supposed to be in here talk what business could you possibly have with me hmm an intriguing proposition go on hmm perhaps you, you know some time ago when now addressing I confronted him about it I let it go but wait a minute I couldn't agree more. One hand washes the other, as they say. It seems our interests are aligned. I imagine knowing his true identity will give me the leverage I need to manage him appropriately. But first, I need you to do something for me. I want you to bring me some wine. Just one small urn should do it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I know this must be hard for you to wrap your sweet little pleb head around. So what do you need me to spell out? So you'll help me. Thank you. Here's the letter. Now, perhaps you can tell me who Quinctius really is. What? He's... Oh, no. That's... Um... Quite a lot more serious than I imagined. I only wanted some leverage over him, not to destroy him. Give me that immediately. Nobody else must know. Thank you. Now, I appreciate your uh, discretion in this matter. I think it's best if you go now. We'll speak no more of this. Demetrius doesn't usually let anyone in here without a hefty tribute, so you must have been desperate to see me. Well, what do you want? 
<laughs> Are you insane? You barge into my villa uninvited and then make outrageous demands? Why would I withdraw from an election I'm bound to win? I... Uh, so... It finally caught up with me. I suppose that makes you... What? One of Nero's assassins? So... You're not going to kill me? So much work for nothing. Oh, if I do it, you'll let me live? Fine. Ruling this cesspit of a city would have been beneath me anyway. I'll have Domitius notify the priestess of my withdrawal. There. You got what you wanted. Now, please, leave my villa and never speak to me again. Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. I've made a decision to withdraw from the election. I want you to go and inform Equitia. Sir? Are you under duress, sir? I, I just had a, a, a change of heart. Are you on track to be magistrate, sir? All that work, all that money wasted. Those are my orders. Carry them out. <sighs> As you wish, sir. Fear is proof. Salve again, my Sisyphean friend. Now, what's on your mind? I've bounced the idea around once or twice, mainly as a way of getting Dooley set free. God knows Sentius is never gonna do it. But from what I hear, Maliolus has the election stitched up. Nobody's gonna take him on and win. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. He did? Oh, that was... Unexpected. I'll let Equitia know I'll be running. All right, friend. Hope you find a way to break that cycle you're in. watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? It must be completed by dusk, just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Galerius, the challenger. Why do you ask?
As I said, I'm planning to hold it before dusk. But I suppose I could hold it sooner, if there's a good reason. Don't believe yes, a word they tell you. I have you. overheard some rather unpleasant arguments. The last thing we need here is additional conflict. Very well. I'll get things started right away. Citizens, it is time. Let us meet to elect our magistrate. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Sentius, of course. Georgius. Galerius. He saved the life of my dear friend Fabia. Dacius. Sentius. Virgil. The man who put a stop to the threats I've been receiving. Galerius. Ulpius. Galerius, the man who saved my life. Rufius. Man who treated my rheumatism, Galerius. Citizens, you have made your decision. Your new magistrate is Gallus Galerius Helva. What? It has been decided. Magistrate Galerius, would you like to make a brief address? Uh, I didn't want to say this isn't something I ever wanted. Now that you've put your trust in me, I'm going to do everything I can not to let you down. I'll need some time to put together a list of the changes I want to make around here. But I promise you, there will be changes. My first order is that Dooley is to be freed. Horatius, release him from his cell immediately. Please. Wait, do I need to say please? I suppose not. That's it. You can all get on with your day. Nothing else to see here. Move along. It's almost as if you're trying to extend my lifespan. Glad Galerius won. He deserved it. Fortune smiles on you today, Julius. Magistrate Galerius here has ordered your release. You're going to let me out of here? I'm sorry it took so long, my friend. And it wouldn't have happened at all if it wasn't for a newcomer. So be sure to offer your thanks when you can. I will. I will. Thank you, Galerius. I'm so happy. I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Why don't you go to the baths, then tell Georges I said you could have some new clothes. 
Then I want you to go home and rest. I'll speak with you soon, Dooley. Uh, hello? I'm Dooley. Magistrate Galeria said I should thank the newcomer. Are you the newcomer? Oh, it is you. Then, thank you. You're a big helper. I was locked up, but they let me out again. I'm so happy. You can have my shiny plaque if you want, and maybe you can help me find my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me, and he said he always would, but then he died. But before that, he told me if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious. He gave me a key to the cisterns and told me to keep it safe. He said there's something very precious way up high. Please help me find it. Please. I had to keep it a secret until I found someone I could trust. Oh, thank you. Here's the key. I hope you find it. In the cisterns. Way up high, Hannibal said. Oh, look over there. Something shiny. Is it treasure? Maybe it is treasure. I can see it for myself. So pretty. And it's just lying out here in the open. Maybe nobody wants it anymore. Maybe no one will mind if I just take it. Don't you dare. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? Oh, sounds serious. I'm listening. Yulia? Oh, no. Poor v Are you... you're serious, aren't you? I doubt Domitius will let me talk to him, but I'll make sure he passes on the message. All right, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you know all of this.
How come you're allowed a weapon and I'm not? Hey! You're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? Well, it's your funeral.
Cerberus lifts his triple head and lets out his threefold graying. Livia, would you stop muttering like Medea over a cauldron? You'll scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives, but they are ignorant. This again. You're in a world of your own, aren't you? Ah, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you did. And uh, there's a. Why? <sighs> Let's just forget that. Not for a few weeks now. Last time I saw him, he was sitting at a table with Georgius, whispering about some job. I remember because they kept looking over their shoulders as if they didn't want anyone else to know. So, uh, naturally, I hovered. The one word I kept hearing was vanishing. And then, the next day, Kabash just disappeared. Coincidence? I think not. All right, see ya. You, Sisyphus. Attack or pursue the stone that always returns, just as the ocean, but say it, then I thought I had, uh, he give, <laughs> and now we share a secret. I'm Georgius. My friend, you... Ah, I knew this day would come. I do not wish to lie to you, my friend, but even discussing this matter is dangerous. Please, let us live the life called safely beneath the ash. Very well, but the magistrate would not look kindly upon this, so please keep it to yourselves. For several months now, I have been sneaking out at night to worship the gods of my ancestors in the temple of Demeter. Each day, I leave offerings of food in the hope that we may have a bountiful harvest. And yet the next day, when I return, the food is missing. The offering, it is symbolic, you see. It is never eaten. So I ask, who or what is devouring the food in this temple? Stranger still. Once I sat in front of my shop like the hundred-eyed Argus until dawn to see if I could spot a thief going in, but do you know what I saw? Nothing! Nobody entered, and yet when I went to take a look, my offering was gone. It is bizarre, is it not? When I told my friend Kabash of this at the tavern, he offered to help investigate. He went in, and to my dismay, he was never seen again. I do not think you should pursue this, my friend. It would break my heart to be responsible for two people disappearing. But you do not strike me as a kind of person to be deterred by such warnings. So just be careful, I beg you. Hey, my friend! Ah, oh, but... Ah, uh, please. 
for each day, right? If it so, not when I. It is the only Greek temple in the city. Head towards the baths, and it is the last building on your right. Gladly. I hope that. Come and join me by the fire. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? Ah, yes, that cursed thing. I know exactly where it is. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the Golden Rule? Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? Wonderful. 
Then let me begin with a question. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? You are an overthinker too. We're the same then. This is probably why I became a philosopher. But if you struggle with right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable, because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize, and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? That is an excellent question, and it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct? which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing. Are you sure, or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? After hundreds of years, and as many great thinkers dedicating their lives to these questions, what hope do we have? if our best and brightest haven't been able to answer them. My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them and evil people will always find a way around them. And so we must accept our limitations, and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the golden rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. Well, reasonable minds may differ, and if utopia really is possible, and I would be glad to be wrong. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then, I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night, I found myself in a tavern in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see... I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, 
and 12 of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. My generation was wiped out, turned to gold, many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were 12 of us in the beginning, but one by one, my friends passed away. Some from malnutrition, Others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I had not seen another person in many, many years. Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation. So I like to imagine arguments, where I argue both sides. But, like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. As you wish. If I did, would I be living like this? Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha! <laughs> I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina, and when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. We had no idea until years later when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. 
I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. I enjoyed our chat, but please, keep my presence here a secret, yes?
Stop! Do not come any closer. Who are you? I am Kabash. Hmm. And let me guess. Another Greek or Roman come to loot and plunder the resting place of my ancestors, hmm? Hmm. Trousers, boots, curious here. No, I suppose you do not. Then what do you want? Hmm, to what end? Hmm, that is welcome news. You really are not Greek or Roman, are you? I was planning to return it myself, but for now, I must remain. Here, take it and restore the honor of Osiris. Now, as for the other plaque. Indeed, I have it right here. I stumbled across a collection of dusty curiosities while searching for a place to hide from the hungry children of Amit, and there it was. You may not. In fact, I am about to destroy it. Because it speaks a treacherous, blasphemous lie. I will tell you, but first, do you know what this place is? Indeed, and I see you know our history. This is the Duat. See what has become of it. I have been down here for weeks, piecing together its story, and here is what I have learned. As Egypt declined and the Greeks had their turn to flourish, their souls came here in great numbers, but instead of adopting our ways, they copied and corrupted them. When they found the obelisk bearing the name Osiris, the true god of the underworld, they desecrated it, removing his name and replacing it with <laughs> Hades. Even the ferryman of the dead, known to my people long before as Kerti, they renamed to Charon. As if that desecration was not enough, they built over this place, using it as the foundation for their own underworld, so that ours was forgotten. Hmm, <laughs> my only solace is that the Greeks then suffered the same fate when the Romans rose to power, renaming Hades to Pluto, and the cycle began anew. It is inscribed with a script I do not recognize, but it is ancient, almost as if it is older than the plaque bearing Osiris' name. But if that is so, it would imply the gods of Egypt are mere imitations too, copied and corrupted from an ancient people who prospered even before us, and that my people did to them what the Greeks and Romans did to us. But this I cannot accept. I sense a deception, 
Perhaps it is the work of Set, the usurper, seeking to undermine Osiris once more. You will never know. This work of sacrilege must be destroyed, thrown into the black abyss below in Osiris' name. You are too late. It is done. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. If it will help you to see reason, then ask. I am from Rakotis, which you may know as Alexandria, the name of the city the Greeks built over it. I was a fisherman, like my father before me. Since the Romans had taken over from the Greeks, I took the opportunity to learn Latin and eventually traveled to Rome. When the fires broke out last year, I tried to help. I gathered terrified locals into my boat and led many of them to safety farther along the Tiber. On my seventh trip, a passenger demanded I wait for his brother. But we were full to almost sinking and smoke was all around us. I told him his brother would have to save himself, and he tried to bribe me by placing a coin into my hand. When I refused, he drew a dagger and thrust it between my ribs. I awoke on the banks of the river to a stranger wearing a ram headdress. He said his name was Kirti, and at the time I simply thought him odd. It did not dawn on me until much later that he was THE Kirti, the ram-headed ferryman described in the Book of the Dead. This is where I belong, as caretaker of the memories of my people. If our ways are to be remembered, it falls to me. I think if someone is to break the Golden Rule, it will not be me, for I try to live as I always have by the command of the goddess Ma'at. Do to the doer to make him do. As for the punishment that will come from it, I finally understand why it has long been said among my people that gold is the skin of the gods. I do not know what could possibly lie beneath the underworld. Perhaps it is infinite darkness. Perhaps it is the lair of Amit, the devourer of souls. All I know is, it would be unwise to venture down there. Is everyone so contrary where you are from? Do not even consider it. Good. Be gone from this place. Wait... You are planning to go down there. I see it in your eyes. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. Hmm, we shall see. You are still here.
when I told you that you would not find a way back up, that was not a prediction. That was a promise. You will die here. I disagree. I warned you against coming down here, against perpetuating this sacrilege. But you persisted. You have undermined and dishonored the true god of the underworld. How did you think this would end, if not with bloodshed? Very well, I will listen. But if I sense deception, or if you further insult my gods, I will carry out my threat. So tell me, why should I let you live after you salvaged this instrument of blasphemy? That may be true of many things, but this is different. If our gods were copied and corrupted from an older civilization, does that not mean they are false? Does that not mean our prayers to our gods all fell on deaf ears because we were not even addressing them by their true names? Hmm, now that I think about it, my people would sometimes call Osiris the god of many names. Perhaps it is so, but the underworld of my people is so different to this one, and so unlike the way it was described by our priests. Many of my ancestors endured great hardship to live good lives so that we may descend to the Duat in death and be judged accordingly. We prepare to have our hearts weighed on Anubis' scales and to swear ourselves innocent of sin before the 42 assessors of Ma'at. And yet, I arrive here to find the Book of the Dead contained only a seed of truth. And now, I ask myself, did our priests steal and embellish the stories of an older people and feed us lies all our lives simply to trick us into obedience? I am not sure I follow. Speak plainly. Now you insult me and all of my ancestors. You have sealed your own fate. Good. I welcome it. You see, the philosopher told me that each time it breaks, Osiris bellows with rage, and his voice shakes the very foundations of the earth. I can only hope one more tremor will lay waste to this fragile place once and for all, and you along with it. When I told you that that you would I disagree you have un very well why should I let you live that may does that
Hmm. But the many of my ans we prepared and yet did our priest. I am. Hmm. Perhaps there is some truth in that. What is your point? Hmm. You are persuasive. Very well. I will let you live, and you may do what you will with that plaque. I will remain here for a while, and attempt to learn what I can about the foundations of my people's beliefs. Go. again. What is it now? Of course, as the Romans say, may fortune smile on you. friend. Did you find what you need? I enjoyed our chat, but please keep my presence here a secret. Yes?
Salve. Hey, my friend. Have you discovered anything about my vanishing coverings? My imagination runs wild, but if what you say is true, I will have to satisfy myself with being dissatisfied. Should I stop my offerings though? Is there any danger? Very well. I will trust your judgment, my friend. Now, was there something you wanted? I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. And may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Uh, I beg. Oh my. Let's see. We don't have much. Her, her, sis, and fun. So. Shh. It's a. That option, as I said. So, if you want to confront him, who knows? Perhaps, but first, you'd need an audience with you know who. The problem is, I suspect the. It looks as though some. If you could recover. It's the towering stone. You'll find them all over. However, this one is. That means. May Fortune. You're coping, citizen.
And here you are. Allow me to introduce myself. As you have already gathered, I've been known by many names. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your arrival. You are unlike the others, aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so reasonably. But there will be time for your reckoning later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by you mortals, not one I gave myself. Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful, just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with your kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords. Desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while an acquired taste can be addictive. No. Long ago, I swore to Persephone that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Eresh Kigal to the Sumerians, Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Persephone to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life and renewal. Your gaze lingers too long. That is my servant. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumu Tabal to the Sumerians, Kirti to the Egyptians, Charon to the Greeks, and Charon to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition as seamless as possible. For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Ferryman. You will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. As you wish. It has come to be known simply as the Underworld, and it exists because of a wager I made long ago. That is a long story, one that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. You see, long ago my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet, and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves, your two short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you, and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer, we offered guidance in agriculture, toolcraft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion, and soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. My kin had seen enough, and gave up on your kind, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic, 
scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world, a utopia unspoilt by conflict and unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him, but he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you, without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a three thousand year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you, so that I might take her with me to Elysium, and unthaw my goddess of springtime. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names, but perhaps you knew them by their Roman names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved Proserpina. As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before, and made all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from silver, a rare element at the time, across all of Sumer. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins, spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Obol, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind will have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock, 
and Persephone is along with it. It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer and a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely, and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing, which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, and his words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt Sumer's stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priest's pursuit of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning. And in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, two kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get here, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a seed of truth. Of course. That is merely the name your people have given to it, but yes. It is my doom. That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife, a prestigious position of power and influence in a new world. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful, and both arrived at the banquet wearing eye-catching dresses and painted faces, their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold, and when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into her own hands. While the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching, and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart, covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my domain. But that was not enough. The entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. I gilded them all to make way for a new wave, and began the wager again. And to this day, each of them, and all who came after, lie in the halls of this city, inanimate but conscious. Suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity, the silent golden sentinels. I give your kind a second chance at life, as well as ample warning about my law. And when you disobey, and you always disobey. You force my hand, bringing terrible suffering upon yourselves. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I am merely the means by which you do it. 
When my kin departed, they left behind many relics which I inherited. A consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged to one of my kin, who the Romans called Diana. As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the Forsaken at my behest. They became known simply as Furies. I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold it. Curious, is it not? Enough. You clearly know nothing. I've always considered that no, this should come. The Egyptian, the Greek, the Roman, even the so, it is the yet. Yeah. Huh. For you, perhaps. I am able to commune with all of the statues in the city. Their ears are my ears, and their eyes are my eyes. If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? Then what an odd question. Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations, or are you going to give me an example? Merchant. How is that inconsistent with the rule I've outlined? I disagree. Having watched this merchant, that is precisely what he would expect from others, and he would be quite capable of paying the price anyway. Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? You speak of the moneylender. How is that inconsistent with the rule? And he would never have signed a contract pledging his labor for 30 years. All he did was enforce the terms of a contract signed voluntarily by others. Ignoring your irritating sense of moral superiority, this is interesting. I'm curious, how do people escape poverty where you are from? I see. And how long might it take such a person to repay their debt? I fail to see how your system of loans is significantly different to a debt bondsman signing over his labor for 30 years. Hmm. Supposing you are right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? Hmm. Huh. Now tell me, 
What other sins do you believe I have overlooked? Abduction? You mean the magistrate imprisoning his daughter in the cistern, I take it? He did so because she sought to escape. A sin I take particularly seriously. Better that he stops her from escaping, albeit brutishly, than I have to wipe out this entire city to punish her. Wouldn't you agree? Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? Do you honestly think you could do better? I should strike you down for that. Huh. Now, did you have any other questions before your reckoning? Very well. Good. Then now it is time for your reckoning. Only, it seems, something is wrong. It has long been within my power to see into the hearts of mortals and weigh their deeds in life. But, when I peer into you, I see only a blank slave. As if you did not exist until you appeared in this city. How is this possible? Charon, where did you find this one? I do not remember ferrying you. How did you come here? You would have us believe that my servant merely forgot bringing you here. Hmm. That sounds improbable. Carol, does this mortal speak the truth, or should I strike her down where she stands? Perhaps. The waters of the River Lathe are known to have that effect. Hmm. I will take you at your word. But as long as your past remains shrouded in mystery, it seems I must put your reckoning on hold. But answer this. Why have you come here? What is it you seek? is amusing, so I will allow you to make your case. But I warn you, if you anger me or waste my time with lies or wrong-headed arguments, you face death here. So, tell me, why should I put an end to the so-called Golden Rule? How so? And be specific. You have made a grave allegation, and I expect you to back it up. His cruelty does seem to grow greater by the day. He is a volatile and confused fellow, that one. I admit, I have grown disturbed watching them. Hmm. If you are right, my involvement has corrupted the very thing I sought to observe impartially. But if I were to accept that, 
Are you telling me these humans could coexist peacefully without theft or violence, without my law? So. And how is that working for you? So you say, and yet your world is still imperfect. You have spoken eloquently, and yet, if what you say is true, it follows that my wager was fatally flawed from the beginning. But that would mean Jupiter, Preservator's father, who knew more about you than anyone, proposed a wager I could never win. Why would he do that? Perhaps, but if that was so, surely I would have sensed his deception. How could I have been so blind for so long? Ugh. Your words sting me, mortal. But perhaps it is what I deserve. As difficult as this is to admit, I have suspected as much for a long time now. And I cannot deny it any longer. I've been so fixated on taking my beloved to Elysium, that every time one of you sinned, it wore away my hope of being with her again. In time, I began to despise your kind for making her believe that you could ever be better than you are. But my rage was not born of malice, quite the opposite. Everything I have done, I did because I loved her. Who knew this empathy of yours, which you celebrate so much, could have such a dark underside? This has gone on too long. It is time for me to let go of this form, of her, of all of you. But know this. If I abandon the way journey for Elysium, neither she nor your kind may ever ascend. Because doing so would violate the rules of my sacred agreement with Jupiter, and you would receive a hostile reception. The best I can do is return you to the land of the living. I will have Charon make arrangements to ferry the others. But as for you, be aware you will be separated from the rest. Once this exodus begins, the events that brought you to this moment will never have taken place, and you will have created a paradox. What will become of you is difficult to predict, but that is the risk you have taken by interfering in the natural flow of time. Now, are you ready? Farewell, mortal. Oh. Uh, hi there. 
Gave me a bit of a fright. Thought I was in here alone. I'm Al. Well, here I am. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, did that lady in the forest send you in here after me? I guess I lost track of time, learning about the history of this place, and it is extraordinary. I'm fairly certain you and I are the first people to set foot in this city for about 2,000 years. Fortunately for us, the last person in here was a Roman man named Galerius, who inscribed an account into a tablet. Apparently there was a community of 20-something people trapped in here, and living in fear of a curse they called the Golden Rule. They believed that if even one person sinned, an unknown god would cast them all into gold, like the thousand people who'd lived here before them. Then, one day, just as Galerius had finished praying for a good harvest at the Shrine of Proserpina, an oracle appeared and told him how to solve the ills of the city, like saving the life of a dying woman, preventing the suicide of a man in debt bondage, freeing a falsely accused prisoner, foiling an assassination attempt, and so on. Meanwhile, the oracle walked up to the temple of the mysterious god, this one right here, and demanded an audience. And the doors just opened up to her. Nobody knows what went on in there, but Galerius wrote the oracle must have been more persuasive than Odysseus, because the next thing he knew, the ground shook and the voice of that god rang out over the city. The many have suffered long enough. Unfortunately, Galerius' account just sort of stops after that, leaving a lot of questions unanswered. What became of him and the other people who lived here? What happened to all the golden statues? And did this mysterious oracle single-handedly undo the curse that had terrorized people for hundreds of years? Uh, what? Oh, I see. For a moment there, I thought you were serious. Anyway, I think I found a way out through the aqueduct that brought water into the city. Follow me. I'm going to pause here for a moment and make sure nobody else is ever lured into this temple. You go on ahead, and I'll be there soon. You're back! But... you're alone. Does that mean you didn't find Al? Oh, what a relief. Thank you so much. I was beginning to think you'd both become trapped in there. Why don't you tell me what you discovered? While we wait. Ah, I see. I thought you might. Well, now you know. I suppose you have questions. You can just call me Charon, if you like. I am sorry I was not completely honest with you when we first met. I do not enjoy deceiving people. Believe me, I do not. But I have learned, from 5,000 years of experience, that most people find comfort in familiarity, in gradual change, and coming to see the truth in their own time. That you died, of course. You were dead when I brought you here. My role, as the servant of the god of the underworld, has always been to assist the chosen to cross the threshold from the land of the living to the land of the dead. Hmm. Usually, when people do not remember how they died, it is because they suffered a terrible trauma. 
Most souls would rather not remember. Ask yourself honestly, do you really want to know? As you wish, you were murdered. You were exploring an old tomb when you discovered a cache of forgotten relics, including two silver coins of ancient origin. Unfortunately, as you emerged into daylight, you were set upon by two thieves. A nearby hiker saw the scuffle break out and leapt to your aid, trying to help you recover your bounty. You both fought bravely, but your assailants were armed, and you were not. There was nothing you or your ally could have done. He died instantly at the scene, and you followed a few hours later. That man's name was Al Wurr. You were each in possession of a sacred coin, called Karen's Opal by some. And so it was my duty to bring you here. It means I am now bereft of purpose. There is nobody else to ferry here. Nobody to keep you company. After 5,000 years, the underworld has finally run its course. Perhaps you have heard the tales of the Greeks and Romans bearing their dead with a... Well, a long time ago, my orders were simple. It means there is nobody else. I see no point in keeping you here. But I have to ask one thing. That you keep this to yourself. Look! Here comes Al now! Al! It's so good to see you. You were gone so long I thought I'd never see you again. Kinda lost track of time in there. You wouldn't believe what we found. The ruins of a long forgotten city. And there was a tablet describing an oracle who confronted a god and undid an ancient curse. Sounds like quite a story. And I look forward to hearing all about it. But... You two look exhausted. Why don't you hop in my boat and rest while I... ferry you back to civilization? Sounds good to me. And you? Are you ready to go home? Hey, you made it. It's great to see you again. I read your book, and what the critics said about it. I guess they weren't ready for your theories about the Underworld. Anyway, after everything you've been through, I thought you might appreciate some... good news. So after we got back to the real world, I started doing some research into the people mentioned in Galerius' tablet, and I found something... strange. I'm... sorry I've been so cryptic. I've been dying to tell you, I just... Really wanted you to see this for yourself. Why don't you head on down there? I'll catch up with you at the other end. Remember me? It's a crazy story. After you disappeared, Karen appeared and told us she was returning us to the world. Even gave us some coins to help us start our lives over. Only, for some reason, she returned us to your world instead of ours. Anyway, I know we only ever had that one conversation, and I wasn't even sure if you'd remember me, but I wanted to say thanks for freeing us from the underworld and giving us a second chance at life. I know! I can't believe my luck either! 
but we're engaged and living together. We're planning to get married next spring. If you're going to be around, we'd love to see you there. Oh, I used Karen's gift to buy a farm in Umbria. Got a villa on it too, with enough room for Dooley, of course. It's hard work, but I sleep soundly every night. I'm finally my own man, and I... I wouldn't change it for the world. Of course, there's a whole museum full of people waiting for a chance to thank you, so you better keep moving. We'll speak again soon, my friend. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here. It's so wonderful to see you again. So, you're the hero who somehow vanquished the last of the Roman gods. As I'm a priestess, you realize you've put me out of work. I'm just teasing. Actually, and it still feels a little sacrilegious to say this, I'm finding life after religion quite enjoyable. Galerius and I are engaged and expecting. We've just bought a lovely villa in the countryside, with room for a large family, and Dooley too, of course. It feels like the world has just opened up for us. There's so much to learn, and so many more possibilities for our children than we ever imagined. We're just so thankful for what you did for us. For all of us. Oh, it's sweet of you to ask. She recovered nicely. In fact, she's here somewhere. If you'd like to ask her yourself. See you at the wedding, I hope. Hello, I'm Dooley. Galerius said you're very nice and a big helper. Thank you for getting us out of the bad place. I didn't like it. I live at Galerius and... Equitia's house. They look after me now and help me remember when I forget things, like brushing my teeth. Treasure? Oh, I forgot about that. I like my box now. Galerius got me a box that tells stories. It's my favourite thing. Yeah, they're fun. Bye-bye. It's you. Hi there. You're... You're the Oracle, right? Oh, of course. Sorry. And I never got a chance to thank you for telling Galerius how to save my life. And of course, getting me and all of us out of a terrible situation. Oh, I barely recognize myself. I'm living in a house share in London with my wonderful girlfriend. And I'm studying English at university. Eventually, I want to travel the world and write about it. Turns out, it's about 30 times bigger than the Roman Empire ever was. Did you know there are entire continents Rome never knew existed? And you can travel almost anywhere in an aircraft, which is rather like flying on a Pegasus, but much more comfortable. Oh, sorry, you already know all that, of course. I'm just so excited. There's so much to see and learn and write about. I have noticed people from your time have no idea how fortunate they are. I hope to change that. <laughs> One day. Last I heard, Maliolus kept insisting he was the last rightful ruler of the Roman Empire and wound up being committed to a psychiatric hospital. As for Claudia, she was always so viciously unhappy. Someone says she'd blown all her money on wine, trying to drink herself back to the underworld. After the horrific way they treated Ulpius and me, I can't help feeling a sense of... What's that German word? Schadenfreude? Thank you. You're very kind. Ugh, 
Someone told me she was boasting about getting her claws into some rich prince, and how she was going to be living the high life from now on. Even in your time, life still isn't fair. Apparently, he'd proposed before they'd even met. And last I heard, she'd bought herself a first-class one-way ticket to join him in some exotic place called... What was it? Nigeria? Some people have all the luck. Really? Huh. I feel better already. Thank you. You too! If you're ever in London, let me know. We can go to bars and drink wine and listen to the stories of the nine million people who live there. I hope so. You are here. It's nice to finally meet you. Lucy is fine. I'm making an effort to blend in, as you can see. We are all trying to keep a low profile. If the world knew we died 2,000 years ago and were suddenly brought back to life 12 months ago, they'd never leave us alone. Speaking of which, I wanted to say thank you in person. I'd say the gods smile on you, but I hear you drove the last of them off. So... I'm studying to get into medical school. As much as I resented the responsibility of keeping everyone in the city alive, when it ended, I realized I missed it. So I guess I'll just keep saving the world, if begrudgingly, one patient at a time. You too, don't be a stranger. Hey. Hi there, I'm Horatius. I understand we have you to thank for giving us a second chance at life. And reuniting Santilla with us as well. So, thank you. I'm living up north and studying in the military academy in Modena. I'm going to be an officer one day. The world's changed a lot. But some things stay the same. Would you believe we're still studying military tactics from my time? Alexander the Great, Caesar, Hannibal Barker... Still, I have to keep challenging myself to let go of old ways of thinking and embrace the new. As Seneca wrote, the ones who pioneered our paths aren't our masters, but our guides. Ah, oh, you remembered that. Thank you. I grieved for a time, but that's done. In the words of Epictetus, as those who rode behind triumphant generals remind them they are mortal, remind yourself your precious one isn't one of your possessions, but something given for now, not forever. Thanks. Oh, and I don't know if you've heard, but a few of us are going for drinks later? It'd be nice to, um, chat with you some more. Great. He's not my... Oh, I see what you did there. Good one. He had more trouble adapting than most. He got himself disqualified from the IFC. So he started some kind of underground blood sport tournament, like we had in Rome. Suppose it appealed to people's baser instincts. And they say he made some good coin killing a bunch of men like that. But his luck finally ran out. And his life along with it. You know what they say. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Hmm. Perhaps. See you at drinks later, I hope. I take it you're the Oracle. Thanks for coming. Actually, I changed my name to Cynthia. I didn't want to be associated with Sentius after what happened. I'm not sure if you heard, but after you drove Pluto off, Proserpina emerged from the Great Temple. She knew right away what none of us had figured out about that psychopath. He'd been keeping my little sister locked up in the upper cistern all that time. But he's been dealt with. He's... Uh, you know what? The important thing is, we'll never see him again. 
Anything I want. I'm a woman of means in a vast new world. I can go wherever and do whatever I please. Of course, I mostly just stay in my villa and have my servant Alexa summon things for me, because it's just awful out there. Barbarians everywhere. He's still there, all alone. The last golden statue in the underworld. Trapped in a metal shell, slowly losing his mind until the end of time. Eternal torment. Just what he deserves, if you ask me. <laughs> then I suppose he got his wish. You too. See you around. Hello. Greetings, my friend. It is a sincere pleasure to see you once again. I am told we have you to thank for freeing us from Hades, and for that, I am most grateful. I am reacquainting myself with Greece. It has changed so much over the last 2,000 years, I barely recognize it. This is at once heartbreaking and thrilling. Perhaps one day, once I have seen all of this new Greece and sampled her delights, I will settle down in Sandorini in a villa overlooking the Azure Aegean Sea. I hope you will join me there and regale me with the story of how you faced off against the fearsome god of the underworld and won. You too, my friend. You're... the one we've been waiting for. I'm Fabia. I wanted to say thanks for sending Galerius to save my life. I don't know how you knew, but I would have been crushed by that shrine for sure. I'm just so happy to be here with you and everyone together again. Even if it's just for one more night. Well, it's not like I have to work with all the silver Karen gave me, so I just do what makes me happy. Mostly that means baking for my friends and looking at memes while binging TV shows in yoga pants. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Oh, it really is. You too. And here you are. It's wonderful to see you again. Oh, and by the way, I go by Philip now. A fine Greek name. I never thought I'd leave that cave, let alone the city. And now I'm living in the 21st century. What a time to be alive. And it seems I have your catabasis to thank for it. I'm working as a consultant to the Faculty of Classics at Cambridge University helping fill the odd gap in their knowledge. Not that I need the money, but I do love being around enlightened minds again. Aha! You remember that? I have to admit, I have been profoundly impressed by the advances humans have made these past two millennia. The sum total of human knowledge available at our fingertips, miraculous modern medicines, and a series of prosperous democracies. Your contemporaries have come further toward Utopia than I ever thought possible, though there's still a way to go. My sincere thanks once again. Oh, hello. It's lovely to meet you. I've heard so much about you. I'm thankful that you're here. I was sure the person who drove off the last pagan god would have more important things to do than visit the likes of us. But thank you for coming and for saving our lives. What you did was extraordinary and I'll never forget it. I'm living in Rome again, in a charming little flat by the Tiber. I'm not far from my old place. Oh, and I'm training to be a crisis counselor. After you sent Galerius to persuade Ulpius not to take his own life, I was inspired. I just want to spend the rest of my life helping people, like you helped him. 
Thank you. That means a lot. And you? Good evening. We meet again. Thank you for your kind words and for liberating us all. In all the time I was in the underworld, I never once imagined that I might end up in a place so much like Elysium. I'm recovering. Octavia was kind enough to let me stay with her for a while, at least until I'm well enough to be independent again. Ah, you remember that. I'm a little tired of Ovid, but that's all right. I have 2,000 years worth of poetry to catch up on now. I'm already up to the 19th century and am quite enjoying the work of a fellow named Poe. I think I may have found a kindred spirit. Men have called me mad, but the question is not yet settled whether madness is or is not the loftiest intelligence. And you, farewell, friend. Some soiree, isn't it? Ah, oh, hello at last. You must be the oracle I've heard so much about. I'm Dacius. Listen, I wanted to express my sincere appreciation for what you did. If it wasn't for you, I'd never been able to sell all those useless old relics I accumulated. Whatever you did in that temple made me a very wealthy man. Thank you. Such a serbic wit. I love it. I took the money I made from selling my trinkets and started investing in the stock market. That's where the real money is now. In fact, I was hoping to ask your advice, you being the oracle and future seer and all that, on which stocks I should invest in next. I can't decide between fossil fuels, tobacco, gambling and arms. What would you recommend? Oh, don't be like that. You can tell your old pal, Dacius. I won't take no for an answer. Oh, of course, yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. I'll go home and buy up as much stock as I can tonight. I'm going to make a bloody fortune. <laughs> of course, don't let me keep you. Thanks again for the tips, my friend. Plunder any more tombs lately, my friend? I must say, I am ashamed of the way I acted when we first met. If I had known you would go on to confront and triumph over the tyrant masquerading as the Lord of Silence, I would never have blocked your passage. You are most gracious. I too would like to offer my thanks for releasing us from that place and for your role in bringing us here. This world is truly wondrous. For a time, I return to Alexandria, but they have no need of another fisherman, and I came to see there is nothing for me there. Instead, I have decided to follow the custom of your youths and backpack the world. It is a great adventure, and I have met many people from many cultures. I spent the first 25 years of my life avoiding the 42 sins that would deny me access to the afterlife. Now, I think it is time I had some fun. Indeed. Thank you, Oracle. Hello there. Oh, I go by Gabriella now. I didn't want to be reminded of that monster every time I heard my own name. After you drove Pluto off, Proserpina came and released me, and that monster got what was coming to him. Mm -hmm. I'm living with Ulpius on a little vineyard in Umbria. It's even more wonderful than I dreamed it would be. I'm so grateful to you for making sure he's still with us. If you're ever passing through the region, I hope you'll come and visit us. You can try some of our very own wine. Thanks. 
You too. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. I'm Opius. I understand I have you to thank for sending Galerius to save my life. The way you just showed up out of the blue and stopped me from making a terrible mistake. I'll be forever in your debt. I'm living with Gabriella in Umbria. We finally bought the little vineyard we always dreamed of. It'll be a little while before we know what we're doing, but every day I look at her and this extraordinary new world with all its beauty and I think, what if I'd given up hope and missed out on all of this? So we're living each day to the fullest. And we end them all the same way, sitting together on our terrace with a glass of our wine, which the locals say is almost drinkable now, and watching the sunset over the rolling hillside. And I couldn't be happier. Thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. You too. Nice to meet you. I go by Rufus now. New start, new name. Oh, and uh, thanks, by the way, for what you did. Sorry, I'm no good with the mushy stuff. Huh. Good to know. Anyway, it was good practice for the new world. Security cameras and smartphones everywhere. Got to stay vigilant. Hmm. I live with Virgil in Rotterdam, not far from where he grew up. It's very... modern. Destroyed in the war, and it... Rebuilt itself. Good place for a fresh start. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with my life yet. Hmm. One adjustment at a time. You too. Look us up next time you're in the Netherlands. I'm... We're grateful. It's so nice to finally meet you. I've heard so much about you. I wanted to thank you personally for getting us out of there. And for helping Rufus come to terms with himself. He may come off a little gruff, but once you get past that, he's a lovely fellow. I'm studying to be an architect again and living with Rufus in our beautiful flat in Rotterdam, just down the river from Nijmegen, where I grew up. Of course, it's improved immensely since I was there last. Gleaming futuristic buildings and clean streets full of educated, accepting people. You natives of the 21st century have no idea how fortunate you are. You too. As Rufus said in his own laconic way, if you're ever in the Netherlands, we'd love to show you around. It's the least we could do. There you are. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, there's one more person I wanted to introduce you to. I think you know her. <laughs> Sorry if I frightened you. Just a little joke I've been saving for a long, long time. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Proserpina, former goddess of the cycle of life and renewal, and now a regular mortal. I wanted to meet you in person, and thank you for freeing all these people, and me. 
I hate to think what would have happened to us without your intervention. Indeed. Suffice it to say that while Pluto was controlling the eyes and ears of each golden statue, I was able to control their tongues and whisper to you when he was distracted. I am sorry my messages were so cryptic. There were only ever brief windows in which I could speak to you without being detected. I did. I may have given up my immortality, but I still retain my gifts as the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. After witnessing Pluto punish countless poor souls over thousands of years, I knew this generation, the final wave, would not survive. So I tried to give them a way to buy more time. A second chance. Rather as many second chances as they needed to avoid his wrath. So I whispered to Sentius in secret, telling him the prayer required to create a portal in my shrine. I knew the danger of humans being corrupted by godly power, and so I put a safeguard in place. I required the creator of the portal to sacrifice their own life, so that it could only be used selflessly to help others. What I did not anticipate is that Sentius would retain his accumulated memories from each previous day, and as a veteran soldier, he had long since shed his fear of death. He quickly discovered that he could, in effect, prolong his own life indefinitely by exploiting the cycle. Of course, once I had taught him the prayer, I could not unteach him. And there was little I could do but wait for someone like you to come along and see him for what he was. We were all fortunate you came along when you did. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't heard from him, and I rather hope it stays that way. Oh, she inherited dominion over the underworld. Last time we spoke, she was working on a new world of some kind. She wouldn't say what it was. But I'd be surprised if you don't run into her again. I imagine we all will, one day. And you, although it feels like I've known you forever. Oh, and one last thing. Do you remember all those golden statues scattered throughout the city? Good, because they remember you. Well done, my friend. Of all the heroes who ever turned to the underworld in return, None came close to achieving what you did. Hercules, Orpheus, Theseus, and Aeneas would be proud of you.